Once a disease has been diagnosed, we as clinicians and the patients would like to know the outlook or, in other words, the prognoses. There are a couple of ways to express prognoses. In this lesson, we're going to talk about two commonly applied indicators, the five-year survival rate and the case fatality rate. Let's start with the five-year survival rate. It's commonly used in oncology to express the proportion of individuals surviving a cancer for at least five years. If 60% make it to the fifth year, the five-year survival rate is said to be 60%. Now, there are certain problems associated with the five-year survival rate. This is the natural course of a disease like cancer. The five-year period starts at diagnoses. However, the disease itself starts earlier. Biologic onset is when something goes wrong on the cellular level. That's when the disease starts. Then there's a point at which pathological evidence could be found if it was sought. Then usually signs and symptoms develop, which get the patient to seek medical care, after which the diagnosis is usually established and therapy is initiated. The five-year period used for the calculation of five-year survival starts with the diagnosis. Now, imagine a new screening test being introduced, which detects the disease at a much earlier point than before. Let's assume we have a patient in whom prostate cancer is diagnosed in 2012, and in 2016, after a disease duration of four years, he dies from it. So, with respect to five-year survival, he would be calculated as a death. Now, let's assume that in 2010, men were aggressively screened for prostate cancer with PSA analyses in this community. And let's say his cancer was picked up earlier by the screening initiative in 2010. Now, even without any improvements with respect to treatment, the same patient would now live for six years after diagnosis, and he'd be counted as a survivor and not as a death in the same five-year survival analyses. So the key take-home message is this. If you see an improvement of five-year survival rates over time, such as shown here, ask yourself, does this have to do with an improvement of care or is it due to better screening? Now, let's turn to case fatality rate. As we have learned in the previous lessons, case fatality rate is calculated as the number of people who die from a disease divided by the number of people with the disease times 100. Case fatality rate is generally used for acute diseases and here's why. So this is the duration of the acute disease. If a person with the disease dies within this short time period, it's very likely due to his acute illness. Conversely, this is the duration of a chronic disease, which ends in death or cure, let's say. Case fatality rate is less useful here because the disease can go on for years and decades. Think about it. Throughout the life of a chronically ill person, many potentially life-threatening diseases or accidents can occur. So if someone with the disease dies, it's quite possible that the cause of death is unrelated to the disease of interest, which makes case fatality rates less useful in this setting. Coming up, more cool ways to measure disease prognoses. So stay tuned. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.